All right, so I want to talk about confidence intervals and specifically the sample size requirements for the proportion. So let's check it out. If we want to conclude that the proportion has a sampling distribution that is normal, these two conditions need to be satisfied. So the sampling distribution of the proportion is approximately normal with mean P and standard error of this thing if these two conditions are satisfied. We are specifically focusing on this one in this lesson. We need the sample size to be bigger so that this quantity will be bigger than 10. As we change P and 1 minus P, that will also make our quantity bigger than 10. But the main thing that is going to make this quantity bigger than 10 is the sample size increasing, which makes sense because as we gather more data, we have more information and that makes the sampling distribution normal. To get a picture of that, I want you to consider the following image and think about the following question. Do you have a dog? A simple question, do you have a dog? And I have these four little graphs here for an illustration. These graphs are the sampling distribution. And as you can tell, as I go to the right, they become a little more normal. Now on the bottom, we see that the sample size is increasing. Here we have samples of size one, size two, size three, and size four. Let's take a look at this picture right here. When the sample size is one, I have possible sample proportions equal to either one or a sample proportion equal to zero. Because I'm only asking how many people, just one. So I ask a person, I say, do you have a dog? They say, yes. Okay, so then the proportion of people in that sample that have a dog is one. I ask another sample of size one, do you have a dog? He says, no, proportion is zero. Do you get it? The only possible options are zero and one when you take samples of size one. But as I increase the sample size to size n equals 2, well now I can, get a, I can get a sample with two people where one of them has a dog and the other one doesn't, so now I have one half. So I have possible sample proportions p hat equals to 1, p hat equals to 1 half, and p hat equals to 0. You see what's happening as the sample size is increasing? Well now I ask three people, do you have a dog? And look what happens, there's more complexity here in this sampling distribution. We have possibilities of zero, a quarter, a half, three quarters, and one. There's more options for them, so these are all the p hats. So p hat equals three fourths, for example, or p hat equals to one fourth. Just different p hats that I can get. By the way, p hat stands for the sample proportion of my different samples of size n equals three. So as I move up and my sample size increases, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different possibilities. So as n increases, this sampling distribution becomes more normal and more complex because we have more possible p hats. These are all the lists of p hats. We have p hat that can be equal one fifth. We have a p hat that can be equal to three fifths. We have a p hat that can be equal to four fifths, etc. So. The bigger my sample, the more complex this graph gets and the more normal it gets. That's the basic idea. So that explains this condition and why we want n to be bigger. And how big do we want it to be? We want it to be big enough such that this quantity is greater than or equal to 10. All right, let's take a look at the question now. A researcher studying public opinion of proposed social security changes obtains a simple random sample of 25 adult Americans and asks them whether or not they support the proposed changes. To say that the distribution of the sample proportion of adults who respond yes is approximately normal, how many more? How many more adult Americans does the researcher need to sample in the following cases? So how many more do we need to sample? because it turns out that 25 is not big enough. We can plug 25 in here and see that it's not big enough. We can do 25 times our first case, 0.15, that's the population proportion. So I can plug in 0.15 times one minus 0.15, and this is probably not gonna be greater than or equal to 10. Plugging that in, we get 3.19, not even close. So if 25 is not big enough, then how many more people do we need to sample? given these two cases, case A and B. Case A, 
the population proportion is equal to 0.15. Case B, the population proportion is equal to 0.20 of Americans who support the changes in Social Security. Let's look at this formula a little closer and realize that for the sample size, we can say 25 plus X. And we can use that for the sample size, where X is the additional amount of people that we need to sample in order to get this quantity to be greater than or equal to 10. So for A, we're going to put 0.15 and then 1 minus 0.15. And we want that to be greater than or equal to 10. So let's pull up a calculator. Actually, we could, if we want to, we can divide this by 0.15 times 1 minus 0.15. There's many different approaches here. And divide this also, 0.15, 1 minus 0.15. Cancel these out. And we have 25 plus x. This algebra is a little difficult, but this is greater than or equal to 10 divided by this, 0.15. 1 minus 0.15. And actually, I could even divide 25 now and say that x has to be greater than or equal to 10 divided by 0.15. 1 minus 0.15 minus 25. That's a little bit tricky because I'm subtracting 25 from both sides. I'm going to make that orange for you to remind you that we subtracted that from both sides. So all we have to do is plug this into a calculator and that will tell us how many more people we need to sample because that is X. So back to our calculator. 10 divided by parentheses 0.15 times 1 minus 0.15 end parentheses and then end parentheses again. Press enter. It's 78 minus 25. And we're going to get that X needs to be greater than or equal to 53.5. 43 so we're gonna say that X has to be greater than or equal to 54 because we know that we need more than 53.43 people So then we're gonna need pretty much we can say that the answer is equal to 54 and we need to sample 54 more people in order to guarantee that the sampling distribution will be approximately normal because of this condition that n times p times 1 minus p needs to be greater than or equal to 10. So if we start off with 25 people and we add 54 more people, this condition will be satisfied. In fact, we could even test it. If we make, let me make some room for myself here. Check this out. If I take 25 plus 54, what's that? 79. So if I multiply 79 times 0.15, 1 minus 0.15, that should be greater than or equal to 10 and barely greater than or equal to 10 because that's the minimum amount of people that we need to sample in order to guarantee that this condition is satisfied. Let's check it. 79 times 0.15, 1 minus 0.15. What do we get? 10.0725. Beautiful. This equals to 10.0725. So yeah, that's greater than or equal to 10. So turns out that we need 79 people or 54 more people because we started with 25. All right. Hope that helps.